welcome. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kitchana Bemitzvotav Vetzivanu La Sok B'Divrei Torah. Amen. Amen. Let me see about share sharing the screen. One moment. And here we are. So, we are getting to the end of the Pasha of Genesis, very close to the end. So, we're talking, of course, about, <laughs> what can I say? This is sort of a great theme of, of all our sessions these days, of how disappointing human beings are in the, in the presence of their creator, and of course, this is right at the very beginning of Genesis, right? This is like, as, as the generations come towards Noah, as we head towards Noah, who's the 10th generation after Adam, you know, we're just talking about human, you know, human weakness, human, uh, the fact they're so, that they're flawed. But at the same time, I want to mention the fact that we are not created perfect is the whole purpose of being created. That the fact that we do have a choice to make gives us purpose in our life. And the fact that we are capable of making good choices, and but that it's up to us whether or not we choose to do that, is what gives us significance and purpose and merit. Otherwise, life would have no purpose at all. But of course, the fact that we can choose to act wickedly means that's a reality. It is a reality. And, and the nature of, of human tragedy. So, going on. So, the nifilim. We're going to find out from Rashi a little bit better what these nifilim were. Were in the land in those days. And even after then, Asher Yavu Uvne Elohim El Benota Adam. And this is hard. The, the syntax here is a little bit difficult here. So it seems here here's what it says. So Asher is, is a relative pronoun, right? Uh, the, in other words, maybe it, it sort of essentially means that, right? The Gam Acharechen Asher, but here it sounds like it's giving a reason of some kind, or or at least an explanation in that. Maybe we can translate that. Yavu uh, Vnei Elohim. So it says Vnei uh, Elohim, which could be mighty men, sons of God, literally, but I would, I would hesitate to understand it necessarily as divine beings, but it's a possibility, and I think it is out there amongst the amongst the um, interpretations. But I do believe here it is essentially talking about powerful people. In other words, around the same time when these powerful people Yavu El Benot Adam came across the daughters of man, by Dulahem, and they gave birth for them in other words they they uh, they gave children to them hema giborim those are the giborim uh, normally gibor is simply understood as a, a hero right a person of renown renown but in fact we're going to see that it has a different context here asher me olam anshe shem and here's this word asher again right so all these sort of relative relative statements Asher me'olam from forever, something like that, on Sheh Hashem. Again, men of renown. That would be men of renown. So there's, there's a lot to this sentence, a lot to unpack, and it's not an easy, the syntax is just really challenging. So here we go. There's a lot of Rashi. A Nephilim. So why were they called Nephilim? Al Shem Shenaflu Vehipilu et Haolam. Do you hear the play on words? So Naflu, they fell, and they caused to fall the world. In other words, we're saying these were wicked people, not good people. But apparently, I think, you know, exactly what the Torah is trying to tell us here is, I'm afraid, beyond my wheelhouse at this point, uh, just a sense that there were the 
people that when humanity was created and given all these abilities, you know, they had great abilities, and yet they used them for negative purposes. And in Hebrew, it is also has the meaning of giants, giants. And we talk about the Nephilim later on. Uh, when the spies came back to report to Moses, when the 10 spies of the 12 spies came back, they said there were Nephilim in the land of Israel. So, you know, whether there's any evidence whatsoever that there were, in fact, some race of giants, I'm not sure. But, of course, we can always refer to a metaphoric sense right? Because we sometimes do refer to people who have huge influence or huge power as being giants. Uh, the whole concept of uh, giant is an interesting literary concept, uh, one to play around with, uh, and as to what the Torah is trying to teach us here. Bayamim hahem, in those days. So this is from Bereshit Rabbah, and it explains bime dor enosh. So, starting from the generation of enosh, that I believe is three generations after Adam, right? That Seth gave sired enosh. So, starting enosh, and it says those that was when people began to the the text said call upon God, and we understood that to mean, in other words, idolatry. They began to worship idols, things that were not the ultimate creator of the universe. Uvne, Cain, and in other words, descendants of Enosh and descendants of Cain. Vegam Acharei and there, and also after that. And here Rashi is picking up uh, again from the Midrash, uh, the, the, the underlying meaning of saying, and uh, also after that. And here is the explanation. Even though they saw that during the, the generation of Enosh, there were many people who perished. In other words, they saw the negative effects of this idol worship and this lack of moral compass. Sha'Allah, what specifically happened? Sha'Allah Okionus, that the ocean rose up, the Hitzif, and it submerged Shlish Ha'olam, a third of the world. Look at this. So there is, as you notice, some um, you know, cross-cultural belief in the fact that somehow the 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 world was submerged, and and of course we have the uh, I believe it's the, the Greek myth of Atlantis, right? So there is something that happened, or something significant. But the point is, they saw what was happening, and they didn't care about it. And frankly, I feel, if you'll forgive me for for preaching, that that's what's going on now. That there are things that are happening that are clearly affecting the environment, and and people are just saying that nah. you know there are people who just want to ignore it. Okay, so they did back here, right? Lo nichna, they refuse to humble themselves. Dor hamalbul, the generation of the flood which followed, right? This generation of Enosh, little mod mehem, to learn from them. They didn't want to accept it. Asher yavu, right? So this is referring to the children. Hayu yoldot anakim kamotam. The point is that these women who these daughters of man, whom these Nephilim consorted with, also gave birth to giants. Anak is a regular Hebrew word for a giant, like themselves, like their sires. Hagiborim. So again, here, right? Uh, men of valor, not the right kind of valor, Nimrod Bamakom. They had the chutzpah to rebel against God. So there is a sense of saying that if we were to see the reality of this kind of behavior, we would be amazed at the degree of chutzpah involved and how ridiculous it is ultimately. So I love to say these days that, that what our religion tries to help us achieve in believing in a divine creator is to try and put ourselves in sync with the universe. And when we behave 
in the in the in a in a negative way in that regard we're actually pulling ourselves out of sync with the universe on she hashem again men of renown but that would be a pshat way of translating it but that's not its meaning or tam shenikbu shemot in other words in on shem here is being understood literally as men of name, named people. Those shenik pushimot, those who were designated by name, and these, of course, we know are the generations that followed: Irad, Mechuya El, Matusha El. These names all have, like Irad, could have the in men have the meaning of merit to rebel, mechuyael, to try and blot out God, metushael, uh, again, to, to reject, to cast away. So it could mean whom God has wiped out, whom God has has uh, cast away, something like that. Shenikbu al shem ovdam right that they were the they were designated they were given these names because of their being wiped out shinamuhu because they were wiped out the huchu and they were torn away so there's mechuyael and metushael and he says davar acher so another understanding of these of this term anshe shem Anshe Shimamun. There is a word Shimamun, Shmama, which means desolation, a, des a desolate place. These were people of desolation. Shishimamu et haolam. And not only that, they caused the world to become desolate. And again, is it relevant today, right? Is it relevant today? Going on. Uh, yeah, that's. Let's make sure we got all this here. We're going to go on. Vayar Hashem ki Adam God saw, Hashem saw, that the evil of human beings was great, Rabbah, Ba'aretz in the land. Vechol yetzer machshavot libo. And the, all the desire of his heart's thoughts in other words, the spirit, these they were obsessed, rak ra, on evil, kol hayom, all the day, all day, all the day. Meaning they were constantly just plotting evil behavior. Again, how relevant, right? So, vayinachem Hashem, and God, and again we've got this nachem. We're going to explore and and uh, deconstruct this word nachem. It could come from nachem to have comfort, right? And we're going to in, in, understand it that way. It can also mean to change one's mind. So it can change my, one's mind positively, change one's mind negatively, but it means there's a change. He, so Hashem Yinachem, God had this Nechama, Ki Asa, that he had made et Adam Baharitz, man in the earth. Bayit Atsev El Libo. And this means literally means he was sad in his heart. It grieved God. It grieved God. So Rashi. Bayinachem Hashem Ki Asa. God, so it's the point here is they're focusing on that God made, and the emphasis is going to be in the land, as you'll see from Rashi's comment, that God was comforted that he had made man in the land as opposed to, right, the heavens. And we'll see how, how that plays out. God was comforted that he has made. There was a certain consolation before him that he had created human beings. He created him on the lower level, like just on earth. Because we're, we're human beings to also be part of the upper levels, the upper regions, right? The spiritual regions. He would cause those upper regions to rebel as well. And this is in Bebereshit Rabbah. 
he was distressed. Adam alibor. So this shall makom. So here I think it's saying that Rashi is saying that the subject is that man, right? Uh, man caused God to have distress into the heart of human of, of God of God. Allah It arose in the thought, literally I'm translating this, of the place, literally, but it means of God. The Ha'atzivo to to and here it's saying that God wanted to distress hum, human beings. Right. So the Yit Atsev he is Vayitatsev Adam means that God felt a need to cause distress to human beings. Zetigum Unculus, this is how Unculus understands it. Davaracher, another interpretation. Vayinachin, so of this word Vayinachem. Nehepcha Machshabato Shel Adam, the thought of the Holy One, of God, changed, turned over, mimidat rachamim, from the quality of mercy, the midat hadin, to the quality of judgment. Allah b'machshava lefanav, so it arose before him in his thought, ma la'asot ba'adam, to what to do with human beings, with humanity, sha'asah ba'aretz, which he had made in the land. So that he's looking at this whole verse and trying to grapple with it and understand the point of this verse. And Rashi goes on to say that whenever we come across this word nichum in scripture, lashon nimlach, it means to reflect, to consider, to think about. Mala sort as to what to do. So it means to consider what to do. So, for example, in Numbers 23, So, there's a statement there uh, where um, God says he's not a human being, that he changes his mind, right? That once he's determined to do something, it's going to get done. For But interesting, it says that God changed, right, in this case, changed his mind to be merciful. This is in Deuteronomy 32, right? He was going to uh, to change from judgment to mercy over his servants. So whether or not it's being inconsistent, I think, uh, I think in the first case, it's talking to be changing your mind like human beings, okay? So... And then in Exodus 32, that is to say that God regretted the, the evil, right? The terrible things. Okay. And then Samuel, Aleph Tetvav, first book of Samuel, chapter 15. So it's basically this has to do with Saul and how God says to Samuel how he regrets, how he he basically crowned Saul as king. So, um, did you do the middle one from Exodus? Yes, go ahead. Say what it says. Go ahead. So there was the Deuteronomy that you did, and then the Exodus. It says, yes. and also thirty-two. And concerning his servants, he he will change his mind. Yes, yes, yes. And then and then the Samuel. Right. No, I did do it. I did do it. Okay, I I, I didn't hear that one. Yeah. No. No. It's okay. Right. Uh, going on, uh, so kulam lashon, right? Kulam lashon machshava acheretayim. They all refer to a different thought, a different consideration. I think would be a, probably a more accurate way of saying this. Vayitatsev el libo, right? So this again now somewhat different, right? Uh, he he was saddened in his heart. Nit abel he mourned al obdam maase yadav. He mourned regarding the destruction of the work of his hands. In other words, human beings. And I, I've said this before, but I want to say it again. And that is, I wonder how we would behave if we realized the degree to which we are beloved by our creator. 
it, it, I think it could make a difference if we really thought about it. And that, that phrase, ki lo lam chastor, because his love is eternal. So even though the quality of judgment meant, right, that there was a need to destroy human beings, it was of great sadness to God. Kamor, and we have an example against this. Uh, this is the second book of Samuel, Shmuel Bet, chapter 19, Ne'etzav HaMelech Albano. The king was grieved regarding his son. And I believe this has to do with Absalom. Absalom actually turned out to be, he actually tried to depose his father, and he was almost successful, by the way. And ultimately, he uh, was uh, killed. He was unsuccessful, was trying to escape, and was killed. Uh, and and uh, David actually made a dirge over his son, Absalom, Absalom, my son. He still loved him, even though Absalom would have killed his father. He wouldn't have had a problem. So, katavti lechuvat apikoris, and he says, and this I am writing as a response to an apikoris. An apikoris basically is someone who knows Judaism, understands the laws, has has a good knowledge of it, and yet rejects it. So, a certain apikoris. Sometimes it's translated as an Epicurean because of how similar it sounds to the Greek. But at least within Jewish tradition, Apikoris is someone who knows about Judaism and doesn't practice it, as opposed to an Amharitz. An Amharitz is an ignoramus, and that is someone who knows nothing about you, a Jew who knows nothing about Judaism. But you can't be an Apikoris if you're an Amharitz. So, a certain Epicurus, Sheshaal et Rabbi Yoshua ben Korcha. He asked Rabbi Yoshua ben Korcha, this is what he said. Amarla, he said to him, Ein atem modim Kadesh Baruch Hu ro'et hanolad. Do you not believe that the Holy One, blessed be he, sees the future? He can predict the future. He sees the future. Amar lo So Rabbi Yeshua ben Korcha said, yes, we do. We do believe it. I mean, he knew this. The Epicurus was aware of it, right? Amar lo. So uh, the Epicurus said to him, And yet it says, God regretted in his heart. I mean, after, so the, the, the challenge here is, if God saw this ahead of time, if he knew, right, if he knows the future, didn't he know human beings were going to do this? So why was he upset about it? He should have anticipated it, right? Amar lo, so Rabbi Shua ben Kuchon said to him, no lad lecha ben, he asked him back, he said, was a, a ben zachar, have you ever had a male child born? Miamecha, in your days, have you ever had a male child? Amar lo hein, he said to him, the Epicurus said to him, yes, I did. Amarlo, so Rabbi Yeshua ben Korcha said to him, Umaasita, he said, so what did you do when this male child was born? So the Apikor said, Amarlo, Samachti v'simachti et akol. He said, I was happy and I caused everyone to rejoice. I, I had a party. I wanted to celebrate with other people too. Amarle, so Rabbi Yeshua said to him, V'lo ha'yita lach yodesh lamut, but don't you know, in the end he's going to die. This child of yours is going to die. Amarlo, so the Epicurus said to him, Besha'at chedva chedvata. He said, at a time of joy, sorry, chedvata chedvata. He says, as a time of joy, you're joyous. Besha'at avla avla. He says, at a time of mourning, you mourn. Amarlo kachma se'achadosh baruch hu. So he said to him, well, that's exactly how Hashem reacted, Right? Afalpi, despite the fact shegalui lefanav sheshofan lachto, even though he it was revealed to him that in the end human beings would sin ula avdan and they would they have to be destroyed lo nimna milivartan he did not uh, withhold creating them. And there's this little editorial note that suggest you know, to to refer to Avra, I believe it's Avraham, Rabbi Avraham Mizrahi. I'm not familiar with this commentary, but Rashi, or or at least this editor, does mention it from time to time. So someday maybe I'll have the privilege of being able to 
read some things that uh, that this Rabbi Mizrahi has written. Bishvil, and he, he did not hold back from creating them. Bishvil hatsadikim shatin laamod mehem, on account of the righteous people who, in the future, would come up from them literally or stand from the meaning who would eventually be born. So, so important to try to pursue a life of tzedek, of tzedek. That it's, it justifies the creation of human beings despite all the evil that exists around us. A little bit more. We'll just finish this off, I think. Let's see. And God, again, this Yomer, see, it, says, it, it can translate as says so, but it makes more sense to translate it as thought, right? Considered. I will wipe out et adam human beings, Asher Barati, whom I created. Look at that. This little phrase here. He's saying, I created him. May al adama from off the surface of the earth. May adam ad from man to cattle. Ad remis, that I believe what's this, uh, crawling things. For ad of or swarming things, to the birds of the heavens. Because I I have I'm nicham right I have changed my mind or I have I regret I regret that I made them and I'll just finish the sentence the noach matzachin Hashem so we wind up on a cliffhanger right this parsha this is the end of the parsha but Noah found favor in the eyes of God again the whole issue of how difficult and yet how worthwhile it is to try to pursue a life of tzedek. So, Vayom HaShem Adam, God said, or God thought, who, afar, why he is going to, why does he use this emche, I will blot out, I will wipe out, who, afar, he is made out of dust, for Ali alav mayim, so I'll bring upon him water, human beings, water, ve'emche oto, and I will wipe him out, blot him out. And for this reason, it uses uh, a, a term machui to blot out, to wipe out. So the question is, what about you? What about the animals? Right, human beings are the ones who are wicked. Well, there's an argument of hem ishchitu darcham. There's a, a position in Bereshit Rabbah that says that the animals also were corrupted in their ways meaning, you know, that they were consorting improperly. Davar another interpretation. So we're not entirely happy with this first one. Hakol nivra bishvil adam. Everything else was created on account of man. It was there for human beings to be able to live, right? Vekevan shehu kala. And since human beings were coming to an end, matzorech ba'elev. So why do we need these other things? They're not just there, you know, to be pretty. They're there to serve human the needs of human beings. And it's it's a literary position. <speaking in Hebrew> For I regret that I made them. <speaking in Hebrew> I have given consideration what to do, Allah <speaking> share asitim, <Hebrew> in that I created them. And that is the end of the Rashi for Parshat Bereshit. And we'll stop the share and uh, take a comment or two if you wish and then I'm going to stop the uh, recording. Any thoughts before we just close here? All right. Well, we'll take it up, God willing, uh, when we have a chance. It'll be a couple of weeks because of next Sunday is Sukkot. Take care. <laughs>